recording. All right. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to episode three of Synology, the webcast. Today we have with us Jenna Bravo as the host. Hello, Jenna. <laughs> you should do this for a living now. <laughs> we should. <laughs> Hi, hey, everyone. For joining. How are you guys? How how are you, Jenna? Good. Good, 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 good. Everything should be good. All right. So I'll start with uh, the session. We have 17 people joining us already. Uh, we expect more to come because none of them have messaged me so far about the link not working. Only Jenna did that. That the link itself is not working. All right, then. So we have a couple of friends from India also joining us. Gunj is from Delhi. Say hi, Gunj. Everybody can see you. Hello, Gunj. Gunj is also going to do a drone cinematography session very soon. He's a drone cinematographer. Piyush, as you all know, he's a producer. Uh, you know, we should also have our titles in our name from the next time. For example, mm -hmm. as we were discussing yesterday, P.U. Stalker, producer, Gunja, drone cinematographer, Namneet Singh, Grip, Vivian, Gaffer. So we can all relate to each other. That will be uh, additional benefit for the next time. All right. Yeah. You should so, be the host all the time. Namneet right? Singh, host and Grip. Host and Grip. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So let me give an overview of what we are going to do today. Let me share my screen. I can see Vivian. Hello, Vivian. So the overview for today is going to be talking about Jenna herself, a discussion about her life experience so far in the industry, her experience so far in the industry. Next, we're going to jump to the topic of today. What is storytelling and the art of storytelling? How it can be, storytelling can be um, used in different forms of art, for example, painting, for example, photography, for example, cinematography. Jenna will be talking about that. For third point will be working with her father as she's doing right now. She has been a brilliant student of the New York Film Academy for so long. And uh, now she went back to help her father who's, uh, who himself is a painter in Morocco. Next is gonna be an open session for everyone uh, where they'll be asking questions. Uh, for the questions part, if you want to peek in, if you think, if you, if you feel like uh, you want to add something to the conversation, you can actually unmute your mic. The best way to do that will be to hold your space bar if you're doing it on a laptop. Just hold the space bar and start speaking. So the rules for today, as you all know, you have to keep your mics on mute. You can keep your video on. We love to see your videos on. Uh, Piyush, why did you, why did you turn your video off? I don't know. It will be good if you can, yeah, if you can just keep the video on. Good. Shri also, Shri, if you can keep your video on, we, we love to see your face. It gives us motivation. Yeah, uh, yeah yes, Navin, some, sometime, yes, yes. Okay, okay. I think Shri is busy with something. I think Shri is busy with something. All right. If you want to join in, you can definitely unmute your mic as I've already told you. And the questions, the host will actually, um, the host can decide, um, and me or, or Jenna, the guest for today, the, uh, the session taker for today, uh, for today can actually decide who should unmute their microphone and speak first. All right then. So, mm -hmm. Jenna Bravo is with us. Jenna is a cinematographer, story writer, filmmaker based in New York as of now and from Morocco. She has done Jenna, how many courses have you done from New York Film Academy? <laughs> I did uh, acting for film, uh, filmmaking, and cinematography. cinematography. Like two months in screenwriting. Two months in screenwriting. All right then. So I would love to share some of the some of the posters I've collected for her work. Um, it will appear on screen now. So one of the work she did by herself, a uh, self-funded film was Aisha, uh, directed by Manish. Uh, he's also a friend of us. He'll be doing a session with us very soon about uh, cinematography. He's in India right now, working uh, brilliantly. 
uh, the recent video that Jenna posted was Witness. It's on YouTube. We, if we can, I'll try to bring it up and uh, play it over here. All right. So, Jenna, tell us what is storytelling? What is script writing and storytelling? <laughs> well, you mentioned earlier that we use story in uh, in in many many different arts, such as paintings and uh, music, books, uh, story stories, everything. Stories where what brings us together right here in the Zoom. You know, it's what we're all here trying to um, tell in different forms and in uh, and of different subjects. Uh, I've, I honestly am figuring out that the more I know my story, the better all the rest of the work um, becomes. And when I mean when you know your story, I've been, so I've been doing the last videos of my father and his story I know very well. I grew up with the man and I grew up observing uh, his work's evolution. So the story is very clear in, in, in different layers and that has helped so much. So in screenwriting, for example, if, if we have a short film or a music video or uh, any video we'd like to make, uh, you know, it, it's it's great to to come from the imagination, but the imagination has to come from a personal point. You know, you, when you're imagining things, it's not completely out of out of the blue. It is ninety five percent of the time coming from your memory, coming from uh, somewhere your ancient grandfather was and it's just getting a, a snippet of it is getting to you but you you know your job is to take that and de develop it in a way that is one modern two that communicates highly to you you know if your work doesn't if the story doesn't communicate anything to you stop it and start over and look for something, no matter how ridiculous it is. It, it could be from as small as uh, uh, my, my mother's uh, gray pants that she always puts on. And from that, from that detail, taking it and expanding it to, you know, what, what every time she wears those pants, what does it trigger? What is she doing? How is she mentally? You know, it's really what I learned from my father is to start from details. The school, the system that schools teach you and YouTube and movies and how like they're, they're, they say they're making them, they go from the general story and then they start making those details after it. But that's the wrong approach. You got to start from the details. Taking that and stretching them to something that is that communicates to a larger audience but keeps communicating to yourself because uh you know in, in the ages of cavemen the these men saw the drawings that were being carved in the rocks you yeah. know it's uh go ahead i'm sorry so jenna can you also touch base upon like um see you must have seen your father painting, you know, in person, in front of you, right? You, you must have seen that, your father pulling out the canvas and he's starting to draw, right? So what do you think, what, what, what inspires a painter um, in general? And then we'll also talk about what inspires a director, what inspires a script writer or a story writer. Can you also tell about that, please? Well, the subject we're uh, discussing recently with my father, what, what he does is dive in his memory. So when he sits down and he starts to draw with pen and paper, and he said when he does that, and there is a personal connection with a pen and paper. He said, you know, every time he tells me when you're writing notes or a story, always do it on a pen and paper. It's more intimate versus typing it up. 
there's more magic that happens. You know, just, just be earthy with it. I know some of you might be high technology, but like, hell no, I'm going to start typing it right away. <laughs> but, you know, you really got to fall in love with it. And you, you, can't, you can't fall in love with something that's on a screen. Like, be more intimate with your work. Allow yourself the freedom to, to scrap it, to rewrite it, to, to be really honest with yourself in a point where you you dive in you go internally and that's where the inspiration is going to be should come from you know most people say oh i saw this beautiful uh thing outside i got the inspiration from it but it's it's more than that you like that thing because it triggered something internally and the storyteller's job is to find what that is and that is what takes things to the next level you know, most of us today stay on the surface because one, it's easy, it's, uh, it's, it communicates, but really what people use story for is, is to go in layers and in depths that most people don't dare to go because we're afraid because we don't know how. And, you know, when, when we sit down to, to watch or hear a story, it's, it's because we are ready to, to put on our seatbelts and just go for that ride. And you can only go for that ride when you got some real high coasters or, you know, if it's just down the road, like I got my own road to go to, <laughs> you know, I'm not interested in going to yours. Take me to yours yeah. if it's, if it's wild. Yeah. Yeah. And definitely. Wild, and wild, sorry, and wild could also mean very subtle, but it it just needs to be uh, very truthful to you. End of the day, no matter how that comes out. Yeah, I mean, uh, a story writer also thinks about this. It's uh, uh, actually, you know, Piyush mentioned it pretty clearly yesterday, and I also was writing it, uh, writing it down that it's the it's the writer's dream that we are putting it on screen. For a film I'm just talking about, it's the writer's dream. The writer can be the director himself or um, it can be, you know, just the writer uh, himself. But, um, you know, in case of any art, as you were talking about, your father is a painter and how he gets the inspiration is, you know, that intimate feeling with your art itself. That used to be a case. I mean, everyone, every one of the cinematographer who's in the conversation today will agree to it that um you know there's a love for um shooting movies on film that's pretty different uh, in terms of digital you cannot touch your digital uh, short film but you can actually touch and feel what you actually shot on a film uh, on a film role right so that's the intimacy which you should have have with your art and uh, so moving forward jenna We'd love to um, now start with the process of storytelling and how the story writing or script writing actually uh, works. So as you already told, your inspiration can be from somewhere. Can you elaborate more about inspiration? How, how somebody gets his or her inspiration from? <laughs> you dial 911. <laughs> seven six four and you tell that babe what you need <laughs> i mean listen that's before that's a question that everyone should ask themselves and the answer will come in various forms if we all have the same answer we're all making the same story and that that that's no fun how you found how you find your inspiration is um You know, I, I still struggle with that because, uh, you know, it comes, the better stories you tell come with your maturity level. So the more you are and your awareness level, you know, you, you only become mature the more you are aware uh, of yourself, of your surrounding, of the energies, of um, a lot of things. And in these awarenesses you must find 
what you'd like to pursue or where your curiosity is where what surprises you what like clicks when when it's in front of you it could be very yeah, I would subtle. also say I would I would also love I'm sorry I would also love to add in that your culture also plays a big role in your inspiration can you tell us more about that touche <laughs> good one yes culture culture hi there hi Shri culture is uh, it's everything it's uh, you know when I say go internally and dive in that's that's being proud of where you're coming from and and know you know Morocco has a lot of uh, Berber heritage and it's a uh, it's a culture f that is very spiritual and uh, that and uh, you know in India spirituality is <laughs> so to dive in that is it's it could be overwhelming that this is why i'm saying coming from uh, very rich cultures you really got to listen to what clicks to you what uh what tickles you because that is what is uh closest to you you know there's so much you can't represent everything you know you come from such rich culture what most of the movies try to do is, oh, I'm going to show this cliche and this one and this one and this one and this one. It's like, okay, but what is it to you? You know, when I'm going, for example, to watch an Indian movie, I want to know what India means to that main character. I don't want to know what India means to the world or to the Indian people or, you know, what does it mean to you? It, and that, imagine the layers in that imagine the different stories in that you know like even give the same exact story to two people and you will have two amazingly different products if they're true to themselves and step away from that cliche you know you're you're thinking you come from this society where it's a lot it's a lot and uh, you know back in the days uh, when cavemen uh, told the stories of the animals that was their world and today's world is much more complex and this is our job to bring it down to a path that must be shared you know when we talk about story it's not just okay what is the story but you got to remember how how does it affect the world you know let's be involved with each other let's let's be you know we're not here just to eat sleep give birth rebirth you know we're here to be together in a way that we coexist we forget about the boundaries which we, we share each other's stories and we learn about each other if if we sit in these surfaces of cliches we'll stay there like let's let's push things further in a way where um where we can be true to our to each other you know and sure uh, sure great point said by jenna great point over there um before we move forward i would love uh, some of our classmates to actually join and shri what's your take so far uh we're just talking about storytelling in general it can be any art form it can be painting it can be photography it can be uh, filmmaking, it can be cinematography, all types of art we're talking about. We're talking about inspiration where it comes from. What is uh, your, um, uh, some, any points that you want to add? Yeah, I think Jenna's doing a great job. I mean, she's touching all the points uh, which I had in my mind as well. But yeah, inspiration is, it's, it's pretty big, you know. You read something on a paper, you know, on a month, you know, on a, with your coffee in the morning, you get inspired from the news article, you, you get a picture out of it, okay? You, you see a painting, you might get inspired. Uh, you listen a song, uh, apparently I heard that Nolan got inspired with Interstellar with a soundtrack, you know? So, inspiration is everywhere, it's out there. Uh, it's, uh, it's just in our hands to pick it. Um, yeah, I think Jana, is on the right track so she has already covered everything so yeah 
That's a really good point where you just said, for example, how Mona, you, um, uh, Moana used, what, what's the name of the track you said? Nolan, Nolan, Christopher Nolan. Oh, I heard Moana. <laughs> Christopher Nolan, what did he use? Uh, no, he got inspired from a soundtrack apparently, so to make a movie. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you know, I mean, I your point made me think of a good one, which is to also find the common points in cultures. So I just found out actually that uh, uh, argan seeds, which is uh, which we make oil out of in Morocco, is also found in Mexico, and in Mexico they have no idea how to use it. And in Morocco, they make an oil that uh, is expensive. And they have this plant, eucalyptus, and we also have eucalyptus. We have no idea how to use it, and they know how to use it. So it's very important to find these common points. And the, the goal with storytelling is to share these common points because an example like this we tell them about argan oil, they tell us about eucalyptus, and we both benefit of two things instead of just one. And imagine this working with storytelling. You know, we have some things similar in our cultures. Let me tell you what, is, what it is like for me and tell me what it is like for you. And it's going to be comp like completely similar, but in different ways. But it's just enriching. Like we... We have access to communicate with the world today. The 21st century is to bring more unity, not check on each other on Facebook and WhatsApp and gossip and this and that. It's, it's much bigger than that. We have an opportunity today to find common points to communicate. <laughs> and, you know, if, if we're not doing that, like, we're just going to be that generation of uh, they just discovered what it is, but let, let us show them how it's done now. Let's be part of that. Let's 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 talk. We need to talk. I want to know what the common points and like be mind blown and then see what the next step is. But uh. Sure, absolutely. Um, I would love to get a point from Vivian. Vivian has also turned his video on. Yeah, yeah, I would love to speak something. Yeah. <laughs> what is that picture? <laughs> what happened? Vivian, your mic. Is it working now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think it's uh, like you made a good point that um, like there's no, I mean, it depends from like person to person, but like, I think if you want to find inspiration, it's first you have to like experience life. Like unless you don't experience life, you're not going to get any inspiration, like sitting at home, like what you said, like sitting on home and going through Instagram and Facebook and, you know, like not experiencing world, you're not like, you're never going to get ex inspiration. Like firsthand experience is what going to, is what's going to like give you inspiration. And you never know, like it can be anything. You're just going out and I don't know, like you see dog shit and you might get experience, like uh, inspiration. Like it can be anything. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Vivian. Coming back to Jenna. Jenna, now. Let's start with our material. Can I just comment on that real quick? Yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, go ahead. Oh, fuck. I forgot it. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. I'll come back. Typical you. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> we'll wait for that. All right. So, but, Jenna, but I, let's I, come. I think I'll, I'll just add to Vivian. I think, um, see, life experience is the key here. You know, the more more experiences in life, the better your product is going to be. So I think uh, it all boils down to that. You take great filmmakers, you know, it's, it's about their life experiences. It's, they come from a particular culture. They give a story. Uh, it's all about life experiences. So I think Vivian has made a good point there. Yeah. yeah and like I was also like what Jenna said, like yeah. uh, the example you gave about Morocco and Mexico, it's like, it, it's true for anything. Like maybe, 
like the street I live in every day and walk around, maybe that wouldn't give me inspiration, but like it would give inspiration to someone else for something else, you know, like, so that's a good point too. A common example with that can be, um, if you go to each country, there is a drum in each. I'm just talking about music in general, like how inspiration in music comes from. Uh, so for every country, every culture, there is a different drum. There is a different percussion instrument, but it's made from the same materials, right? They produce different sounds, but it's the base of it. It's just the leather on top of it and then the wooden structure. But different shapes may dif make different sounds. And then we associate that music with different cultures. So that's how the inspiration for like the early humans or like culturally would have come from, right? That can be also uh, you know, uh, a thing uh, just to talk about random inspirations. Jenna, now uh, coming back to you. So, I remember. <laughs> so, so to go back to the point of uh, experience, mm -hmm. you know, I was I was struggling with that, and I was, you know, what my dad's work allowed me to do is experience his exp his uh, experiences, but in a diff but I read them in my own experience. So even this. The, the experienced must share to allow the inexperienced to have somewhat of an experience out of the experience, if that makes sense. You know, yeah, this is... Too much. We'll have no? to simplify that. <laughs> so, the experienced. His or her job is to share her experience. The inexperienced... So, okay. Experienced no experience we're doing science Ex here experience shares for the inexperience the experience gets somewhat of an experience out of reading this experience so you know it's creating something versus and this this is to encourage the experience to speak up and produce and provide something for the inexperience to have because you know, this, this is also a maturity uh, responsibility, you know, as you grow more experienced, your responsibility, if you're, if, it's definitely good. So why not be truthful to that and share it? And this at the same time will, will bring out life You get it, no? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, we get it. Yeah, we get it. We get it. We get it. <laughs> so, um... Circle I mean, board. <laughs> okay, I'm getting a comment from Mehik. Mehik, do you want to contribute on something? Do you want to uh, say? You can unmute your mic if you want to. Mehik, can you hear us? Just yeah, the word uh, Jenna was looking for is contribute. Okay, we got it. So, yeah, Jenna, uh, contribution is a big, big part of this. Mehek in the comment section is uh, typing that contribute is the word that you were looking for to contribute in life. Uh, I think that was your complete sentence. All right, then, uh, Jenna, coming back to filmmaking, because, you know, we were talking about, and this podcast is going to be about filmmaking and cinematography. So, Tell us just the base of how somebody should approach uh, story writing or storytelling in filmmaking. You know, it comes from the inspiration, but how a protagonist, uh, how do you come up with protagonist? What is, the, what is the protagonist? Tell us about that. Well, there's this idea that the protagonist is always a version of yourself or a version of uh, your enemy or a version of who you want to be secretly. So protagonist usually comes from you and it should, if it doesn't, it, maybe it could come from someone you observe, but that person you observe is also, you know, it's going back to the thing that, you know, what you like about them. So it is a mirroring thing, but 
uh, you know, I've been, uh, this is, I'll write down his name. I've, I've been watching uh, Joseph Campbell a lot and Vivian, I showed some of, I showed him and, and um, his interview on Amazon, but you guys could probably get it for free in India. <laughs> and wow, he's so good, man. He's, uh, I highly recommend it. I'm going to put a link in, in, in the group chat, but this man talks about the hero's journey and how, and the way he talks about the hero's journey is a lot like uh, your your journey, you know, how, how in a story you go through sp uh, specific events that lead you to a certain maturity. You know, a character enters the movie weak or uh and leaves the movie differently whether that's stronger whether that's even weaker whether that's non-existent and to a certain extent that is a lot how we're dealing with our lives you know how we're dealing with things how so to really while writing a screenplay we go back to this note on maturity experience and awareness you know jenna i remember i'm sorry jenna i remember in film school we always thought that there is a graph to your story there's a graph to your movie movie watching experience it starts from the bottom it goes up to actually where the character uh, it goes up to the realization point and then it comes down to the saturation point. So there's yep. three points in the graph usually. Um, yeah, I mean, what you said actually uh, portrays perfectly on that graph itself that the, the, there's a character which enters the story at a certain point and he's, uh, uh, you can say, less powerful, less mature than, than uh, what he or she ends up uh, at the very end. Um, we'll come back to that. Before before that, I would love Piyush to actually add in. Piyush is a yep. producer in pro in profession. And uh, if you want to say something, Piyush, uh, you can go for it. But I would love to ask you how a producer sees a story. Like, you know, a producer is going to be the big game who actually invests his or her own money or, you know, somebody else's money. Uh, the government's money into it, uh, mm -hmm. but how a producer actually sees the story? How should should it should it be the case where the producer syncs with the story? He actually he or she actually likes it. It should be his or her own flavor. And if not, uh, what approach is taken by a producer? Yeah. So thanks, Nav. And a great point, um, which Jenna just said. Um, what in simple terms, what I would like to say, like the transformation which we were talking about the graph. So that's three acts of a person who enters the story. So in the end, every person have a character transformation. That's a simple term what I would use because in life also you change with time. In 10 years, you be a different person. Same wise in story, you have a character transformation of a protagonist or antagonist. You can do that. So do we always divide? Uh, I would, uh, Piyush, Piyush, hold, 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 hold. Piyush, hold. Shri, mm -hmm. what is a protagonist? <laughs> Yeah, are you sarcastically asking, or do you really want to? Ask? No, no, really, really. I want. I want. Okay. So it yeah, no, no. yeah. Protagonist. Three wants to virtually slap you. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, why is why is he asking me? <laughs> uh, can I can I say protagonist is a hero? Um. Not, I mean, you can, so there are multiple heroes in a film also, like yes. in some films, we have five heroes. So there's one yes. protagonist from which the film point of view starts. That's yes. mostly his POV. That's the protagonist. That's his story, which is going on. So that would, I would say in a simple terms, he's a protagonist. Yes. And all the supporting people along with us are antagonists. Like you say, multiple heroes in a film or a heroine, you say, though might be an antagonist in that. Plus, what Jenna was saying that we see the graph all the way goes to the down. So that comes into our, if you basically do in the timeline, we have three acts. And even if we see a character transformation of the protagonist in the end of the film, 
that's what make a good film in a writing as well if if you don't see any transformation of the character he still remains the same what he was in the beginning from my point of view that would be a bad story writing that's my honest opinion everybody have different opinion everybody do different way and coming back to nerves question from a producer's point of view of when we get a story first of all uh, what every producer does is they really invest in that film not in terms of money but the time and energy they really want to see what the story is and if they can really correlate with them in their life because even the director producer cinematographer writer all these major department should be deeply connected with the story if they are not then it's only working for money and then the end result is not always good so what i was always say producers when we get the script we go through the whole script and if we are deeply invested in that uh, script and we feel okay this is my genre definitely we should do it so then we really don't think about uh, uh, amount that purpose that we need a lot of money shoot that film then we think more may ways out i mean every film have a different budget for example if jenna gives me a script and i see because she will look at the script in a different way when i look at the script when i'm done reading it i'll start it breaking down it into money matters because i think from that perspective also how much money do we need to get into that film if i'm deeply invested i would definitely invest my own money usually producer does that and they take a share out of that film or if he is not like he's like all right with the film we'll try to break it down and invest in the film and hire more executive producers to bring this story writing to a life that's my perspective on this okay great great said by piyush over there i would love before we go back to jenna i would love uh, rohan rohan um, to add in your point tell us something about uh, the base of the story from a director director's perspective and then we'll jump back to jenna before we do that leave us uh, rohan leave us with a random log line and then point by point we'll add to it okay we just we'll just do a example of uh, we'll just make a story right now okay jenna will start with that story jenna will start with that log line who's the protagonist who's who's going to be the antagonist and then we move forward like example okay so uh, tell us first about uh, how a director should uh, you know once he receives uh, once he or she receives the script uh, how should he go forward forward with it and then talk about and then give us a log line at the end um well see uh, when it comes to a director's point of view uh, at the moment i have words and i have to convert everything into pictures and vision so i'm going to start visualizing the film when i'm getting words when i'm getting a draft i start thinking about characters i thought i start thinking about how to develop those characters more and uh, you know because scripts can sometimes leave you with blank spaces uh where it's just mentioned like it's mentioned that he he gets up he picks up a bottle from the table and sits how does he get up does he do something while getting up is he scratching his nose is he looking somewhere it, is he is, is is that is that what director brings out from the actors themselves definitely definitely we need to understand where is it heading we need to understand what is happening and uh, where are we heading towards him scratching the nose is it a motivation or is it just is he just itchy you know what what exactly is it so that comes on when you're reading the script sometimes you might add a little to the script and obviously you need your writer's consent before doing that your writer has to accept with additions or subtractions to the script once it's there and that's uh, that goes on to picturizing it and like what like what peer said he needs to think about budgeting it he needs to think about breaking it down and while breaking it down he also needs to think about monetizing it if there's money coming in then he's going to green light the film if there's if he doesn't see money coming in he's not going to green light the film you know at least he at least he wants to recover the least he wants to do is at least spending um say 1000 dollars in a project he wants at least 999 to come back you know that's something where he is heading towards so uh, again you know things go like that and then there are sometimes you need to add things to commercialize the project so those are a few things where you know i'm i'm again talking from a very commercial aspect to it i'm not talking from a art house film where i don't have to worry about it i'm talking about how to recover money and i'm talking about how it does you know making money back from it so yeah it takes a lot it takes a lot of uh, i have to live those characters when i'm getting a script suppose there are six characters in a film i have to live all of them to understand what are their characteristics 
And, okay, uh, Rohan. Uh, before we talk about the log line, Piyush, you want to say something? Yeah, a great point, Rohan. Thank you. Like the way he said, if uh, if the director gets a script and he's reading through it, when you see the guys get up and get a water bottle, so how will the director direct him? In a filmmaking term, there's a thing called beats of the story. So that's the beats which the director gives to every actor, every actor, every antagonist he needs to give. So that's the uh, professional term which I would like to use and emphasize more on that. The director gets gives beats of the story to each and every line of the script. He needs to do a line script version of it. He needs to give beats to each and every actor, even if he's an extra. So that how that's how the acting comes out of an actor. That's director's major job in it. I think it also be can call pacing, uh, which it it can be matched with the pacing of the movie itself. The beats, the beats, beats in the script can be matched to the pacing of the movie. What's up with Mehek? Okay. What are you? I don't know. I don't know. So coming back to Rohan. Rohan, give us a logline, and then we'll uh, think more about the story. Can I just say uh, to come back on what Rohan said. Uh, Jenna, Jenna wants to say something. So yeah. this, you know, the question of what does the producer do, what does the director do? I, you know, the example I gave with Morocco and Mexico, real quick. That's what producers doing that's what the director's doing it's bringing their understanding and their experience of what they're reading into the into screen you know this is the beauty of having a crew and having a good one too you know you you don't hire a producer just because he can figure out the math you hire the producer because his understanding of your story there is common points you know, the director, he's hired to, to, he's chosen, you know, when you say Martin Scorsese or, uh, give me something. Just take anyone, just Nolan. take anyone. Nolan. Nolan. Or Wes yeah. Anderson. You know, it's Wes very, just, yeah, it's, it's specific styles. You know, my story is going to work better with Wes Anderson's experience or Martin Scorsese's experience. The producers that they're behind, you know, they don't change the crews very much. They work with the same kind of similar directors, actors even, because of that specific reason. They have a close understanding to your experience, to the way you communicate things. But differently, you know, the, the director's job is not to always decide whether or not when he gets up to pick up the bottle to scratch his nose or whatever, because the actor can do, come up with something you would ne never even think of. You know, he would maybe take something out of his sock or have a completely different approach to it. And this is the beauty of having a good crew and with variety in it. You know, crew members should have architects on set. They should have scientists on sets. You know, to really take things to the next level, bring, unite this coexistence of understanding and uh, life experiences. You know, I, I don't want a bunch of you know, I don't want to hang out with just a bunch of actors because I'm, I'm limited to one approach of storytelling. Let me, let me vary this up. Let me hang out with a, uh, a priest. Let me hang out with this uh, physicians, you know, let me hang out with different uh, mindsets and life experiences and see what is best for my story. That is what a good storyteller is after he's after exactly um i'm sorry jenna i would love to add and we were talking about nolan a few minutes ago uh what he actually does is uh do that same thing he goes no. on to sign yeah what no way really yeah he does that he does that while he was shooting in Inter interstellar he actually went up to physicists a lot of them actually and gave the equation of how a black hole should actually look. And, you know, um, I think a few few months ago or at least a year ago, we actually got to see how a black hole looks 
uh, with the image that was posted by NASA. And it was pretty similar to that because the calculations of all that were done by various scientists and then, uh, you know, the VFX team or whatever, they actually got to work on uh, the mathematical uh, projection or the diagram of how a black black hole should actually look like. So that's that's the interesting point. Sri, I think, would like to add in on this. See, see I think it's called Kipton, I guess. Kipton, the scientist. I think probably these guys uh, came together, understood the scientific models and things like that, and then implemented for the moon. Yeah. All right. So I think Rohan went away bef before giving his log line to us. So let's actually take log line from uh, Rohan is back. Rohan is back. I'm waiting for Rohan to connect connect his audio and then we'll take a log line from him. Uh, before that, if anyone has any questions till now or wants to add in, can unmute his or her microphone, please. Or I'll start taking names. Do you want to add in? You should start taking Pratik. names, I would say. Pratik, Pratik Suknani, Pratik Suknani. If you can please unmute your mic and tell us about uh, how you approach storytelling. Just brief, keep it brief. Pratik. I think he does not want to unmute. All right, um, we'll come back to Rohan. Uh, he says, I would like to listen more. Okay, okay. Yeah. Rohan, uh, give us a log line and then we work on it. All right. Um, a 43 year old man and goes to a rave party and ends up in jail after 50 years uh, with an accusation of bank robbery. Can you hear me? I'm sorry, it again. Repeat, repeat it again and keep it slow. Okay, word by word. Piyush, can you unmute, uh, can you mute your microphone? I'm sorry. A 43 year old man ends up in, uh, a 43 year old man goes to a rave party and ends up in jail after 48 hours of being accused of a bank robbery. Jenna, your take on it. I'm going to write it down and uh, show it on the screen, but your, how do you, what do you name the character? Let's start from the very top. What do you name the character? Um, and uh, once you start speaking, uh, we'll also come to the points. How a script is written. What is EXT dot? What does exterior mean? What does interior mean? What does, how do we write, you know, the, how do we signify lighting? Uh, inside the script, how, would you, how do we signify uh, if it's a rainy day or if it's a sunny day in the script? But before that, just give us some names of the character and uh, uh, who else is in the story? Uh, so this 43-year-old uh, guy is a... a, um, a He's a turtle named Pratik. <laughs> and his, he has two best friends called Mahek and Jabbar. And they're also turtles and they're outside of the jail trying to get him out. Okay, so it's a fictitious story with turtles in it. Um, I'll write it down. Uh, if if Rohan Rohan can you can you type it in the chat box for me please? That will be good. That will be great. That the names the names. Her voice is cracking. There's some issue. There's some issue with my connectivity. Okay, Jenna, can you type it down for us in the chat box? Uh, okay. Character one. Character one will be Pratik. Uh, all are turtles. This is a turtle land or uh, whatever whatever you want to call it. Okay. 43 year old turtle, pretty young to be a turtle. <laughs> it's good. 
it, it quickly turned into a Teen Turtle movie. <laughs> <laughs> Vivian, your chance. Vivian, Vivian, Vivian. The scenario, the scenario, the scenario. Explain to us how it will look, uh, uh, how the rave party looks like, or if they, if you want to start the story from a, a point which is before um, the rave party itself, or you want to start at the very end when he's actually inside the jail. What do you want to do? Sorry, I didn't get your question. What do you say? I'm asking you now moving forward in the story as we have already named our characters. What would you start from? What would you start your script from? The party itself, a scene before the party or at the very end when uh, they are uh, in jail when the 43 year old turtle is in jail even if there are turtles involved and there's a rave party i think i would just get directly into the party and not worry about what's happened before so the the, the first scene you want to show on screen is the turtles actually dancing in a rave party yeah okay Okay, great point, great point. Piyush, your take on this. What, what do you, uh, how do you, how do you see the rave party? Are these friends all together or is uh, two of them talking amongst themselves? One of them is getting a drink from the bar or something like that. What's the party like? So first, I love the log line, but what Jamie put into that turtle thing is uh, like, okay, we need to get details on that character as well. <laughs> First, um, the Pratik, should he be our protagonist because he's the 43 year old guy and Jabbar and Mahak should be our antagonist. Let's break it down with the characters as well as a writer's point of view also. So this rave party, so I would say Pratik is a businessman, okay, 43 year old successful guy who is um, fed up of board meeting or like he just got fired so he want he's in let's say which country then we haven't decided the country yet so yeah, yeah the culture the culture will associate with the country shri give us a country shri all right uh, uh azerbaijan what <laughs> what did you, you say want, what? <laughs> you just wanted a country right so i just <laughs> Type it down, type it down for us. Steve. Okay, okay, down. just let's 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 take Jenna's country, Morocco. Morocco, Moroccan turtles, 43 year old. Okay, we are there. Uh, coming back to you, Moroccan turtle, 43 years old. And we have so what I would say they are unknown to each other, but what one thing which uh, makes them together should be what happens in rave party, you do drugs. So that's one thing which make them together. So that's how I would like to start and see what others inputs are. Drugs make them, made, meet them each other over here. Okay, 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 definitely. Uh, Jenna, coming back to you, what happens after that? How is the party like? Explain the party to us in one paragraph. Uh, it's a lettuce party. So, <laughs> there's some mold in the lettuce, so that gets them woo. And uh, um, we have an intruder. Who who what other are the than drinks the like? What are the drinks like? Drinks in the party. What are they like? Called lettuce juice. <laughs> <laughs> lettuce juice and <laughs> lettuce juice and raw lettuce. So uh, that's that's the that's the environment of the party. Okay. So there are other other turtles also in the party. Now, no, let's get it seriously. Let, let's actually make a new ninja turtles on this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how do you describe their connection with each other? As Piyush has already mentioned, they are unknown to each other now. Um, so, <laughs> Piyush is typing. Piyush is typing down lettuce party and lettuce juice. So uh, one, coming back to Jenna. Uh, so they 
so you said they don't know each other is that what was agreed on yeah they don't know each other but uh, drugs make them friends and they meet each other that's you a type it down common Pius, connection Pius. that's a common connection you type okay. it down for us okay So they they like the lettuce. They eat all the lettuce. They're out of lettuce. They gotta go out and find lettuce, but they have no money to find lettuce. So they decide to rob a bank, and the bank has a lot of what's the money? Okay. And so in order, so high on this lettuce. they're on their way to rob a bank which takes them three years <laughs> and uh, one of them they all get there one of them i figured it out so he tries to <laughs> he tries to break in the bank it takes him a long time and in that long time the police came and put him in jail <laughs> as rohan told us it will it will take them 50 hours it takes them 50 hours 50 hours rohan coming back to you uh you can see all the details in the chat we have named the characters i, I think you got disconnected there so these are three turtles yeah. in the story they are going to a lettuce party and drinking lettuce juice lettuce is a drug for them now as jenna has told us they are out of money okay. they want to uh okay um jabbar jung wants to go out of the meeting thank you so much bhai we'll be having a, a session about wedding cinematography and photography with jabbar jung singh on this sunday so make sure you join that that's completely uh, we we are going to we are going to shift from the topic and uh come back to storytelling again so uh, rohan Rohan, Rohan, Rohan. Yeah. Uh, what would you like yeah. to add more? Uh, character specific. We have also described the characters themselves. Fifty, forty-three year old Pratik is a well-settled turtle in the turtle world, whatever that means. I don't know, but uh, I think uh, he's he's fed up and he wants to go to these grave parties. Now, your take on this. What would you like to add up? Um. so i think uh, i think considering you have uh, pratik jabbar and uh, mehak so because there's a, we have a male character and a female character and i would love to add a love try a love uh, angle to the story so we can have pratik being a 48 year old turtle uh, which is basically which is basically somebody in the teens i guess for total world and uh, it's total teenage and uh, total and prati can be having some uh, can probably having some teenage problems and jabbar being the old turtle invites him to this rave party and he tells him that everything is going to be fine your life is going to change you just come with me and uh, that's where he sees mehak for the first time that's and uh, let us being the drug for uh, let us being the drug for uh, the turtle pratik uh, jabbar can prop jabbar can get jabbar would get a lettuce and they might be they could be on control but no wait actually mm. okay before you think more rohan uh, vivian yeah your your yeah, add add something for us vivian vivian rohan what? has already described rohan has already described what what happened before the party now tell us what is happening inside the party uh between them actually running out of the money so how do they run out of money money <clears throat> turtle dollars turtle dollars how do they run out of green turtle dollars because <laughs> they are buying a lot of lettuce i guess i they are they are buying but you know be, we, should, could, we, should, could, we should we should we should establish they could be high and start eating they could so basically ah, let this can be something like, let this can be something like shrooms for them and then they start looking at dollars like it's lettuce and they start eating the dollars okay vivian uh you want to add in something 
I think they're all so high that they start like, I don't know, peeing everywhere. Or... <laughs> <laughs> Sri, Sri, coming back to you. Shoot now. What? A- add something for us. Add something for us. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> Why did they steal? Right? That's the point, right? That's the point. 48 so they're, hours they're later, of, they get they're, the out, they're out of money. They're out of money. Okay. They're, they're too high. They're uh-huh. too high. They're out of money. Mm-hmm. And they have 50 hours. I mean, uh, they are arrested in 50 hours. So, what happens during these 50 hours? Now, let's jump to that. Hmm. Probably they're partying, they're chilling, they want to get laid. Okay. <laughs> you know, um, you know what, actually, like if we want to, if we want to break this down into something that's actually... I will not eat actually... lettuce yeah. from now on. I, I quit okay. lettuce. <laughs> All right. Rohan, so, Rohan. Um, yeah. So I think, I think what we can do right now is to make it interesting for everybody. Let's start breaking it down into a structure. Where we have our protagonist, where we have our main character. His goal is to impress this girl and uh, get out of his uh, get out of his gender life. His uh, conflict is that he ends up in a jail with an accusation of a bank robbery. So, uh, Jenna, you can probably just start breaking it into a structure now. And how do you how do you want to go? Jenna, ahead go ahead, this? go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So, structure, you mean? Okay. So, uh, okay, so we have an idea of the story. Jenna, we have a comment for you. Jenna, we have a comment for you in the chat box. Read it out. Thanks for my first break as a turtle, Jenna. This is hilarious. I never thought I'd find myself in the middle of a love triangle that two in the turtle rave party and everyone's snorting letters. (laughs) They're smoking letters. They're not snorting letters. (laughs) Okay, Jenna, break, uh, break this story down for us. Now, how, what is act? Uh, tell us about what is act one, what is act two, how they go forward. So the yeah, act so, one will be introduction of so, our characters, basic as basic so, as that, introduction of the scene and the characters. Go, go for it. So, uh, act one is the ordinary world. And this is not true for all scenarios, but this is the uh, common one. And what I, what the ordinary world, you know, you have your characters living their lives before the adventure starts. And once the ordin, ordinary world is established, uh, we get introduced, we obviously are introduced with the protagonist and sometimes usually the best friend or you know the the close friends of of the main character and then we are introduced to the antagonist and that Jenna, is Jenna quick question Jenna quick question is is all this happening in act 1 is this still act yeah. 1 of the film act 1 you are introduced the ordinary world the protagonist uh friends uh the antagonist and the call to the adventure. So this is a, an important one. So the main character gets called to the adventure, whether and there's different kinds of calling of adventures. There are uh, uh, protagonists who uh, you know they don't want to they don't want to do it, but then they find out they have to. There are one who are the, who ones who are determined to go on the adventure. It's like I, I gotta do this. And after the call of adventure, we have um, we. Where where okay. is the point that where is the point? I mean, we have discussed a lot of scenes in the story so far. So where is the point that Act One uh, ends and Act Two starts? Where is that point? You mean how many pages? Not pages. I mean, what is the point which actually can be uh, mentioned as act two of the story now? Where does that start? Is is it uh, where the turtles actually start to talk to each other or after, way after that? What point will you consider to be act two now? Act two is the when we're introduced to the first threshold, when uh, we meet some of the allies, we meet the gatekeepers, and all these 
and there's you know also most in the most of the films that have an adventure in them there is uh, they all have like these scenes where there is where the character leaves their ordinary world and steps in the strange world and in the strange world we start to meet the people there so the main character also starts to meet the people there and that usually happens in a big event uh you know the famous uh, scene in star wars is when they're all in the bar and he he kind of scans everyone and starts to learn about everyone and uh so that's so when the main character steps in the strange land that's when we know we are in act 2 okay so once that is done once that is done piyush thank you so much you are typing it for us yeah piyush you want to say something yeah one question um i would really go back from a, this is my producer's point of view but i would like to say is this a normal film or an animation film we haven't discussed that because we have turtles now in it so should we make uh, it a what, animation what Really let's poll for it. Let's poll for it. Yeah. Uh, I'll say let's make it a real life, uh, like uh, not too too animated. I'll say Lion King uh, territory. Like it should look real in terms of that. Jenna, what's your poll? Real or animated? I'll do animation. Animation. Rohan. I'll go animation. Animation. Shri. Yeah. Ninja Turtle style. Live action, yeah, live action, live action, not animation, right? Vivian. Okay, I do live action too. Uh, I like that. Live action, ah, uh, yeah, a uh, borderline of live action and animation. Where, like, okay. for example, Lion King, it looks pretty real. To be honest, if you watch it in yeah. 4K or something like that, and it's but it's uh, like highly animated. Vivian, your take on this? Vivian, with just doing show. a random poll. What? The Broadway show. The, a Broadway <laughs> show. Wow. Oh, good. Perfect. A Broadway show. Uh Ahmed is also joining us. Ahmed, what is your take on this unmute your mic and uh, poll? Yeah. Ahmed iPhone 11 has joined us. That's thank you Ahmed for telling us. Yeah, that's the phone, 11. not not Ahmed. It should be the pro. He says we are game. Just type something. Yeah, games games do have stories. He he said a VR yeah. game. Games do have oh, stories, so that can be also a case. Let's do yeah. let's do animated. So game can be considered animation. So let's do animated story. Yeah, Piyush, animated story. Okay, animation film. Another point before we started. So the term for other people who have joined us in the filmmaking, we always say when we pitch who meets who, like two films. So for example, if it's a Ninja Turtle meets which film, so we make one film. So that's also one point we missed initially when we begin. So what would yes, we share? Yes, uh, I would love Shri Shri to talk about this. Shri should Shri should actually do. So Ninja Turtle meets meets what Shri? What meets is this? Uh, so that we are making one. So two, two films or meet two. and make one film. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So where are we actually moving towards? Is it? Is this it is an animated movie? turtle film with uh, a lot of. This is PG eighteen plus. <laughs> okay. This is PG eighteen plus uh, turtle. <laughs> And okay. uh, a lot of rave party, maybe something else too. Ninja Turtles uh, meets Kill Bill. Wow! Oh. Perfect. That's okay. that's one thing. Yeah. No. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> Go, that's, Shri. That's Sold. <laughs> Sold. Use back. I'm typing it down. Okay, so this is Ninja Turtle versus meets Kill Bill. Sorry. Well, actually. Rohan, uh, while Piyush types, your uh, you want to add more on this? No, I was no, I was just talking about uh, like let's let's actually make this more about storytelling than uh, production because we're just keep on keeping on circling around I other mean, topics. Yeah, so. every point comes into play. Now we can also we can no, also we're not, talk we're not, about we're not talking about we're not like. Uh, Let's let's just stick to that. Let's just stick to how how to structure yeah. the story. Yeah. About most most of most of this saying, most of go yeah, go when ahead, is go your ahead, inciting ahead, incident? Ahead. When is your inciting incident coming? What part is your climax? And you know, just talk. Let's just focus about on that more than now. Talking about how to get it to the producer, how to do all of that. Yeah, I think Jenna went and away for Jenna, a while. Uh, would Jenna. would you love to? I can see Jenna's cycle at the back. <laughs> Jenna's back. <laughs> 
Jenna, would you like to uh, mention the realization point in the story? I think realization point can be at the very, very end of the story. What, what do you say? I'm gonna share a document with all of us that can help us. Yeah. You guys should buy the writer's journey. It helps me a lot. It's definitely a good recommendation if you want to understand storytelling. Honestly. Show us the book again, Jenna. Show us the book again. Who is it written by? I'll, I'll put uh, the name on the chat. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, back to Rohan. Rohan, you were saying what's the realization point in the story? What is your perspective? Then we'll go back to Jenna. So yeah, there are ways of going ahead with this uh, about how we can start this. Is uh, we can just start. We can just start it at a party where the turtles are partying and we don't know exactly who they are. And uh, we see them doing drugs and uh, everything, and then we just show we just show a quick montage of the entire forty-eight hours running, which probably can have a chase sequence. You know, you can add a chase sequence, which is, uh, which basically gives us more time. And then forty-eight hours later, they end up in jail. They don't realize how. And from now, we can start going back and flashback about who these people are. How did they end up at a rave party? After ending up at a rave party, why did they go to the? Uh, why did they think about looting a bank, or whether did they actually loot a bank or not, and how did they end up in jail? So, uh, Jenna, Jenna, Rohan over here is uh, portraying the story as a flashback that they are already in jail, they are put in the jail, and then we start from the very top where they actually go inside the body. So he's he's uh, going into that flashback mode again. Would you, Jenna, Jenna, would you write the same way that he's portraying? Would you actually first uh, act one or scene one? They, they are inside interior. They are inside jail. Three turtles are actually sitting inside jail. Then after that, introduce the characters or you just go in linear way and then leave it up to the director or the editor at the very end. What would you well, that's, a, that's, that's a much later step, you know, in these early stages, you want to get the story first. You, you want to establish the journey first and then however you cut that down and arrange it is really less. And to do that less is helpful because you don't uh, lose uh, the goal of the, the journey which, and the... So I wouldn't worry about that now, you know, how that's. So, so for your take, if you're writing this story, I mean, the same story we were discussing right now, uh, by your means, you would, <clears throat> you would actually write the story first, then make it a script. Is story and script two different version of, uh, versions of the same thing? That can be a. You could. You could write, you could start by writing it in a fictional style and then dialing that in script, which is m what I'm currently doing. And uh, it's, it's much better to uh, write a script and cut down a story from something that has a lot of material to work with versus trying to just squeeze so much during the screenplay. So uh, I would also advise writing in a fictional format beforehand if you're taking your work seriously. Absolutely. That, um, and, I, well, look, and I look at writing, it. Sorry. sorry. And, go, fictional go for it, writing, go for it. and fictional writing allows you to uh, shift in POVs, sh uh, add more details, add background story, and it's very important to have that as the storyteller and it's also good to give to your actors sometimes and so i highly recommend that but no. sure 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 i i see it as i see it as uh, you know the best example which every one of us uh, might have seen can be harry potter where, where actually it was a book then converted to a, a script which can be shot right and they were not sorry. Tell how Harry Potter is rich in details because of the book. You know, you can't get that much richness by just 
all right, today I'm going to write a script. No way. No matter how amazing and talented you are, there is no way you can come up with so many details as in that movie, not coming from a source that is, you know, it was books and then it was cut down to hours. It's, it's a lot of work, but it's good to work with more versus I don't have anything yet. Let me struggle with that. It's just wasting your time, you know, like get those details out, get those backstories out, get get different POVs, like experiment with that because you could use that sometimes in the screenplay. You can't, you don't have to stick to one POV. Because yes, screen- uh, we have, we have a comment. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, let's take this comment. We have a comment from Hassan Khan. He's a, he's a, he's a photographer in Staten Island. He does weddings. He does uh, phenomenal work in weddings. He's from Staten Island, by the way. Uh, thank you so much, Hassan, for joining us. If uh, I think you got to go. But do join us tomorrow where Rohan will actually have a session with Sneha, uh, both of them from New York Film Academy, uh, working in industry right now. Talk, and they'll be talking about direction. Uh, Am- Ahmed has unmuted his mic. Ahmed, do you want to say something? Uh, no, I just, I just woke up. I just wanted to say. <laughs> um, how are you guys? Good. Wait, so what are we talking about? We're talking about storytelling and uh, like how do we uh, progress in story? What is, okay. what is your take on this? Dude, I literally just woke up. So you guys have to explain me or tell me the story from the beginning. Tell us, tell us a story that you, that you had in your dream. Something like that. Like, uh, you know, many, many, right many now? movies are... Yeah, <laughs> tell us something. <laughs> Oh man, you don't want to know my dream. (laughs) (laughs) But no, um, tell you a story. Like no, we we already have the we already have the story. What do you think of the story? Uh, Can you see it in your chat box? Wait, what's the story? The story is Hmm. that we have a forty-three-year-old turtle going to a rape party with two of his friends. One of them is a woman. Wait. Uh, they fall into a love triangle. Can you see that in you your rape? Rave party. Okay. Yeah. Three turtles and going into a rave party. Lettuce. <laughs> yeah, everybody's snorting lettuce. Okay. What is and your take that's on the it? End? No, I mean um, they end up in a jail. They end up in a jail after fifty hours, but we are just talking about how to build characters. Uh, you know, uh, is we just we're still on the story. Uh, we haven't transitioned to script writing as of now, but we are just developing the characters themselves. Okay, so just this old forty-year-old guy. Mm-hmm. Um, he's he sees everyone snorting lettuce. So is that does that concern him? Like, is he like against I mean, snorting they're lettuce all turtles. too? They're all turtles. So. Okay, Emma, Emma, you just woke up. We won't be disturbing you. You will have your own session, I think, next week. Uh, Emma and I will be talking about grip, uh, hardcore grip, what actually grip is, uh, how grip involves. And before that, I think we'll have a session with Vivian again about uh, gaffing. But we come back to storytelling. Uh, Jenna. We, um, do you want to continue again, this session? I can a picture of this diagram if it helps everyone if interested sure um i think jenna he has the specific steps what does it say just i can i can read it over real quick so in act one we begin with ordinary world call to adventure Refusal of the call. Yeah. Mentor. We meet the mentor. And then between act one and act two is the first threshold. So ordinary word we already discussed. Call to adventure is clear, I think. Anyone has any questions about that? I think uh, Rajveer Singh is with us. He wants to join in uh, something about the turtle story. Let's hear him first and then let's uh, jump back to the graph. Rajveer. Hello everyone. I am actually from Ajmer, Rajasthan. I am a student studying in class 12th. I actually formed something about the story. I, okay, so there's a turtle world. Okay. So 
Jabbar and Mehta are teenagers. They they just robbed the bank. They are into drugs and all, and they just ran out of the scene. Okay, then they go to a rave party. They they went just go to a rave party and they try to also they sell drugs. So now sell the letters and all. Then there comes this Pratik. He's a 48 year old man. He's actually divorced, out of pension and all. He comes and asks for a drink. Then they that Jabbar and Mahak just you know give it him the letters and drugs. Okay, and he just takes them and all. Okay, he goes to just some outskirts of the actually rave parties are you know, held at outskirts of the city. They he just go out goes out and sits somewhere. He just so much. into that drug and he just sleeps so mai can jabar they leave some part of the money with him and that after the in uh, um, the next day next day police raid that scene and this pol- police caught him uh, caught him caught him with that money and he he ends up in jail that's all i want to speak uh definitely rajvi that can be a nice character development but you know what once uh it also depends on what is the length of your movie or the scene or as uh, you know bigin was telling it can be a broadway show so if it's a one hour movie one hour show or a one hour episode or whatever you want to call it we have to de- uh, develop certain character aspects of uh, the character himself or herself too uh that is what i understood from it that if um, you know the 43 year old turtle pratik is going to be our protagonist we need to know much more about him or her by the end of it you know not mentioning that uh, i mean some details are not needed but they are definitely included to to give a character aspect but um, you know nice take on that actually nice take on that definitely uh coming back to jena jena your mic uh yes so well how about i ask everyone if they have any questions because i have sure to... sure sure uh, i think we we talked a lot about storytelling and what the basics of storytelling are how to de- uh, develop characters how to go forward you as uh, piyush also told us that you should be you should have a vision of what this story is actually finally going to be it it's not compulsory this the story we were talking about can also be portrayed in a painting can also be portrayed in a photograph can also be portrayed in a broadway show and can also be portrayed in a 3 hour long film so you know to have that in your mind is also important any questions from any of the viewers we have right now we uh, we started with a lot of viewers but actually i think they were they left in between everybody gave a valid reason to leave uh, you know uh, in, in in even in these times we are actually having a nice discussion about cinematography um I'm very lucky to have have you all talk uh, with me. Thank you so much guys. Um so before we leave can um, if if anyone has any question uh can unmute their mic or type it down. Um uh, how what's what's the book which you were having it was called the hero's journey right? Oh yeah I sent it on the chat oh, I can okay. got it. Uh, i would like to add on one thing jena like yep. for us we guys have done film making so for a layman who wants to enter this industry and he do have some idea in his mind but obviously he don't know any formatting of the script how should we go on he don't know about act 1 act 2 act 3 he is completely unaware of the whole situation about writing film making how should that particular person start writing a script what's in his mind how can he bring it in writing Well, there is no shortcut. You gotta gotta read and learn how to do it. You know, this is the best. You know, and to do it the simplest ways. You know, when Nav asked me, "How will you structure the story? Would you act with Act Two?" And you know, start with learning the basics. 
read about it, watch, hear how professionals do it. Uh, it's it's a lot of work that pays off, but you there is no there is no shortcut. Like uh, for example, the book I just recommended, read that. It's so so helpful, and that's just to get the story together. And then when once the story is is good to go, is has a core. It doesn't have to have all the details mastered because while you're writing the screenplay, some of those will change. So really, just focus on the core. And once that core is established, then the format begins. And the format is, is, it looks scary, but honestly it isn't. It is just a way to organize your thoughts and the stories. And it is just a way for everyone on set to, to communicate. And, you know, it's shorter descriptions. It's, it's easier than fiction to a certain extent because instead of describing how this beach is, you could simply just say exterior beach day. And then you figure that out after when you're doing location scout versus in fiction, you have to describe what it looks like, how hot it is, what the, you know, the surface of the sand is hot. And then when I put my feet deep under, I feel the cold, you know, it's much more details like that. But in the screenplay, you worry less about those things and you just establish, okay, this is what's happening in the scene. This is what's, what, this is what's important during this, the screenplay part. It's not so much how is, what is the story here? You know, that needs to be established way early on. And those things change, you know, again, those details, those branches change, but the roots remains the same. And that's the only advice I give to everyone before diving in script format. Thank you so much, Jenna. Uh, I think we should conclude now. It's been one hour, 30 minutes or so. Okay, Pratik has a question. Before even writing a story on a given log line, I would want to know how to think of a log line actually. I mean, where should the mind be while thinking of a log line in order to elaborate the same into a story? Uh, I think Sri will uh, answer that pretty well. Sri. Yeah, so it... it it again comes back to your um, the first point yes the first point jenna made uh, about the inspiration right uh, so you can get inspired from anything right so the log line probably needs to come from there right uh, so, inspiration also comes from your recent events yeah you, so you one might thing have I, seen yeah one thing i would tree, probably suggest is try to probably read a lot. See, watching movies is one thing. You're just learning what everybody knows. But if you want to become a better filmmaker, you need to read a lot of literature, right? When you read a lot of literature, automatically your thoughts are even molded better and uh, you tend to be a good filmmaker and ideas just come up, right? So maybe that's a good way to start. Yeah. yeah. Read more, uh, watch more. That can be two of the words we take from this conversation today. So, um, what do you? Let me just say Jenna. something real quick. There is two ways of looking at log lines. There is the first way of looking at a log line is when you're you have your story already and that's clear in your head and you're just trying to break it down into one sentence. And there is the second way of looking at a log line is that is what will inspire you to write the story. And both writers use these techniques for different stories. So my question back to you, Pratik, is which one are you asking us about? Is it do, how do I get a log line to write a script or how do I write a log line for my script? Yeah, two, two different aspects of the same thing. You have a story running inside your mind. Now you want to create a log line to pitch it. Like uh, we were talking with Piyush uh, yesterday about the elevator pitch. So you start with your log, log line. You break down your log lines in one minute and you explain it as much as possible. Explain uh, for an elevator pitch in one minute. Uh, we'll get back to that later. Oh, one more thing. Sorry. And one good thing I learned about log lines is the more contrasting they are, the better. For example, uh, the blind man 
what saw his first love met or met with his first love it's like what all right i'm about to watch this movie yeah. you know versus uh yeah. this blind a blind old man uh just finds finds his love finds his love can be a pretty good a blind old man dreams of his you know it's it's less you know yeah. Yeah, it's something some opposite chair. I get it. Yeah, the, you're the right. The use sir. of the use of the yeah. use of proper words. The... You know, th- this is clear with Batman. You know, these yeah. the protagonist and the antagonist are two very contrasting characters, yet the same thing. So it's it's good. Like you know, uh, the Batman who who saves uh, Gotham is deflected by a clown. It's like what? Wow. Okay. Versus, oh, uh, Batman is defending Gotham. And fighting he, with a villain. And fighting with a villain. You know, yeah. it's so that can be find, that can be that, that that is. Find that interest. Find find you gotta find that first for yourself. Be like, what is that most intriguing contribution for you? Before so something like you this. Find, something like this. Yeah, a blind sure. man. A blind man solves a murder mystery you know there is a contradiction right, right. he's blind but yes. he tries to go and solve a murder mystery right so there is some curiosity element and pretty logger heads to each other right so i think jenna is right log lines need to have opposites or probably i don't know how to put it across but yeah, the, uh, the right. power of the log line the power of the log line is i mean we all we all i'm sorry but we all know it now before we watch a movie on netflix the line you see on the top is the actual log line of the movie itself and you watch the movie or you wa- start watching the trailer before um, i mean after you have read that log line on the very top so the power of that log line is um, can be can be can be summarized in those words now yeah, jenna you okay. would you love to just look at your favorite movies and read their log lines start there just see how your favorite things are doing it and then from that you you start being your own uh, bird absolutely vivian has unmuted her mic dekho bhai mera vivian yeah i, I think the log line i think it's a log line basically a log line for generates a or like it pops a question in your head and like uh, creates a curiosity about that log line or what this would be it's like the perfect log line like i think <clears throat> all right cool uh, i think we should conclude right. jena what do you say sometimes the, the, we're talking about like high intellectual movies log lines here there's also log lines that are supposed to be just funny and log yeah. lines are just supposed to be sexy you know he porn films do this really well you know uh two girls and ta 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 and boom they tell you what it is already comedy does this really well also like uh, uh an old man moves back to his daughter's house so it's really the type of the story again you know if your if your story is mysterious you better have a mysterious log line if your story raises an intellectual question raise an intellectual question if your story yep. is just dumb comedy write that down like give us a sneak peek of that that will hook us up because that is you know you're one click away from your audience and that exactly. log line for that all right jena talking about that we should conclude to tonight's uh, session today's session as per your time as per pushes and your time so uh, thank you so much jena for joining us today as the guest as the main speaker of this conversation we were talking a lot about storytelling tonight and we tomorrow should, sorry you should always do back to you navneet on bbc <laughs> back to you <laughs> no, uh, back so, to you wow. uh, uh, sorry so jena thank you anyways thank you so much for being here and uh, i think jena will be with us for the remaining sessions jena if any time uh, if any time you are available during uh, you know yours uh, 11:30 to uh, 12:30 i guess in the morning 
definitely join us we will be talking about filmmaking different aspects of filmmaking as we go forward now into production aspects of things and then into post production uh, we will be also t- uh, talking about editing what uh, you know it's just to touch base uh, our uh, it's t- just to touch basics for us again uh, because we cannot be on shoots as of now it's good to uh, you know bring back our all we have learned and you know put forward what we have learned uh, after we graduated after you know uh, between these two months at the in the uh, in this in these last two months of us staying home what have we learned so far let's all come and share it so tomorrow's session is going to be with sorry go ahead go ahead jana i think what would be cool also is if we have a session that strictly talks about how we should start thinking about film productions given what's out there in the world right now you know you can't just go out call an entire crew and i think it'd be helpful to have a session where we can discuss some solutions some ideas exactly exactly with, the future uh, of the future of a film set the future of a film set how is it going to be yeah because i saw this article the other day about how uh, big production studios are already thinking of ideas on how to keep the business given this the, these circumstances so i think piyush actually for- piyush yeah piyush told me about that that disney has stopped uh, stopped their production uh, mm-hmm. till 2021 uh, till next year so you know that would be something uh, a little bit concerning as a lot of uh, marvel movies were coming out yeah piyush end with that yeah, please and, uh, you should go and check a uh, sag and dga websites also they have such rules and regulations now due to covid so if you, even if you want to shoot a film within next 6 months you need to follow those protocols so all those lines are on dg and sag website you can you should yeah, definitely yeah piyush can actually mention that yep yeah, piyush do 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 um, do mention these points uh, in yeah. your own session for mm-hmm. sure and if if possible we'll also be having we'll all do our own research and then come and uh, talk about what will be the future of filmmaking now so we'll be signing what's wrong with the host <laughs> i'm just going to keep it unmuted for the whole time now <laughs> okay we'll have uh, a session with rohan and snee tomorrow about direction Uh, let's all join us uh, let's all join again and uh, also this, we'll be discussing much of the same things as we did today but also the how a director director now approaches the story we have already created a story i think this turtle story will be a great start for tomorrow again and uh, vivian be ready because we have to light up this turtle story and i have to uh, operate the crane for this turtle story if this comes to you know if this comes to a real life production and shri will be the dp will be having a session about how to dp this turtle movie <laughs> very soon so let me actually share with you what's for this week you will be able to see that on your screen and now we have we have already done a session with jana we have uh, on 14 that's tomorrow we have a session with rohan then we will have a session with zavi where he he'll talk about the director's relationship with actors uh, and also touch base on sound because i believe he's a phenomenal guy in sound he was supposed to join us today i don't know what happened i'll, I'll just uh, text him about that then we'll have a session with shri about uh, the role of cinematographer i'll name the session as the role of cinematographer then we'll switch topics then we'll switch topics and go to uh, the session for sunday about wedding photography and film making with jabar jung singh then on monday we'll come back to naomi guys if you remember naomi came to our class in naifa do you remember her a french cinematographer naomi a french cinematographer she's doing great i saw her instagram uh, uh, she'll be joining us and talking about uh, cinematography as uh, she hasn't been to a film school formally but she is now working full time then we'll have a session with ale where she talks about cinematography and her master class on ac how to how to focus how to build camera in ac 
Jenna, uh, we love to have you during these sessions. Thank you so much for today, everyone. Uh, I think you already have got uh, tomorrow's link, tomorrow's uh, Zoom link. Uh, Jenna, would you end with some comments? Um, uh, inappropriate or appropriate? <laughs> anything, anything. We are just uh, 10 of us left. I'm kidding. I was going to say a, a bad word, but uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, let's, let's make some good stories, people. Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, so, guys, I'll see you tomorrow. This, uh, by the way, these sessions are uploaded on, Insta on YouTube. If you want, I can definitely share you that link. If somebody wants to YouTube, yeah. Hey, hey, you did not say that. Boy. I did not know it's going on YouTube. It is on YouTube. You want to go and search for it? Just type Synology. You'll see my picture over there. Okay. Yeah, just type, and go and type Synology. Yeah. yeah, definitely. I'll share the link. It's on YouTube. Yeah, yeah actually, I'm glad you recorded this. You're yeah, you're definitely the spoiler guy. Go it is pro. Being recorded. It is being <laughs> recorded. I, I'll I'll show you the channel and tell me if it looks good. Yes. So still, this is the page on YouTube. There are no subscribers. Really cool, love. Go and subscribe. We have I Vivian's do. episode and we have the. Wait, what is it called? Synology. Synology. Go and search for it now. Oh, You'll see oh. my name in front of it. I don't know why, but you or you see Synology as the logo and then you see Namneet Singh Kalsi. I don't know why. No, but I don't. Anyways, just type for Synology and you see, you'll see this logo. I don't.